I had a couple of seconds before going live and since I'm going to go work out after this, I thought maybe I'd just start on my arms. I, um, I really want to work out. We'll see if I follow through. Day 35. Day 35, rise up and hope today. And we are calling today, oh, the joy of a transformed mind. Oh, the joy of a transformed mind. As I just said, I really want to work out, but sometimes I don't follow through with what I want. So I need, I need help and I need it here because... I can think about all the good things, but if I don't think about getting through the hard, I'll just give up and quit. So I hope we learn a lot today. Father, I thank you for this devotional. I thank you that you are the transformer, Holy Spirit. I praise you and I love you and I thank you in Jesus' name, amen. I was thinking just a little bit ago about the transformer toy. I remember sitting there with my my little kids and and they would be playing and um, they would have this transformer and as they did whatever they did you know it start out one way and then a little bit of adjusting poof, suddenly it's this beautiful other thing and I thought oh wow as I was thinking earlier if we could just do that if it could be so quick and so transforming that we are immediately in victory mode when we come to Jesus. And sometimes that happens. You know, there are radical encounters, just like as we've been studying Paul, who used to be Saul, it was a radical transformation the day that Jesus met him. And sometimes that happens, but here I have this thing called an onion, right? And an onion has layers and you got to just peel them off and it's one layer at a time until you get to the good stuff. And sometimes when we embark on a relationship with Jesus, it's just like that. It's layer after layer and God knows how he's going to do it with each individual life. He creates uniquely he saves uniquely, and he restores uniquely. So be encouraged today with wherever you are. You know, we've been in the book of Philippians, and in chapter 1 it says, He who began a good work in me will complete it. And we are on a process. And today, oh, the joy of a transformed mind. We're going to begin in chapter 4, verse 8. Paul is speaking to his friends and he says, finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me, Paul says, or seen in me, put into practice and the God of peace will be with you. I'm going to read that again. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, Put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. I want to read the Study Application Bible. It says here in 4.8, What we put into our minds determines what comes out in our words and our actions. Paul tells us to program our minds with thoughts that are true, that are noble, that are right, that are pure, that are lovely, admirable, excellent, and praiseworthy. Do you have problems with impure thoughts and daydreams? Examine what you are putting into your mind through television, books, conversations, movies, magazines. Replace harmful input with wholesome input. Above all, read God's word and pray. Ask Holy Spirit to help you focus your mind on what is good and what is pure. 
It takes practice, but it can be done. <sighs> Sometimes it's very easy for us to understand things in one area, but somehow we can't connect it to a, another area that is very important to be connected. And I'm going to give you some examples. I was thinking about today, um, I was thinking about some, some pictures of things, and I, I have this gym illustration because everybody, everybody who goes to the gym loves the gym, and they have a goal in mind, and they want the abs, and they want the muscles, and they want the goal, and they understand Starting out, it's going to take a lot of hard work. You're going to be sore. You're going to cringe with pain. But if you want the goal, you're going to keep going. You're going to keep going. And you're going to press through the hard. And I wrote down here um, an example of someone who is being trained and everything's going well. But then suddenly you decide not to go to the gym for two weeks. You go back in two weeks and you're upset with the trainer because you're looking at what is going on with your body and you say, you know, what's up with this? And the trainer says, well, what do you expect? I haven't seen you in two weeks. Or he tells you to do 20 reps. He walks away. You do five. When he comes back, you lie and say, I'm done. It was great. Let's move on. And you're not getting your results because you are shortchanging the program. You are, you are falling back instead of moving forward. And a lot of times that happens in our walk with Jesus. Another example, you're on a diet. Everybody goes to bed and you find out where the chocolate is. And then you're disappointed because you're not losing the weight when you get on the scale. Again, you know, you're not following through. You got to follow through. It's like our walk with Jesus. We want heaven, but we don't want the walk. We want God's blessing, but we don't want the relationship or we don't have time for the relationship. So we think in our mind and then when things go wrong, the first person that we blame is God. God, why are you doing this? Why are you allowing this to happen? And God gently says, I haven't seen you in 10 years. And God in his love and mercy says, but I'm here with you today. We can start today. We can start over. Or you occasionally go to church or you go every Sunday and you check it off because you heard the sermon, but you left Monday on Monday, you didn't apply what the sermon was. You didn't put it into practice. And you have a really lousy week. And you're like, well, man, this isn't working. You know, Jesus doesn't work. You know, it doesn't work. I would say to you and encourage you to say, well, what are you doing wrong? What are you doing wrong? Because it's not God. Are you dropping the ball? Have you given up your follow through? And Paul is encouraging his friends here about the mind because here's the deal with the mind thoughts come all day long and we are only responsible for what we do with the thought in the bible it says take every thought captive every thought that comes to me i have a choice i can either receive it or i can say no I'm not taking that thought because that's not God's thought. And yesterday we spent a lot of time talking, you know, measure it by God. If it's not from God, return to sender. Same thing with the mind. If a thought comes in and you know God wouldn't say that, pfft, send it back. Send it back. Say, no, I'm not going there. I'm going to meditate on what is good, on what is noble, what is true. What does God say? If I hear a thought, you will never amount to anything. Let me just say, would God say that about me? Absolutely not. God makes everything and everyone beautiful. And so whatever thought that is, that's not my thought. I take it captive and I pull it down. I pull it down. It has no place in here. And I move forward. And I love how it says in 4.9 in the study application here, it's not enough to hear or read the word of God or even to know it well. We must also put it into practice. 
How easy it is to listen to a sermon and forget what the preacher said. How easy it is to read the Bible and not think about it and not want to live differently. How easy it is to debate what a passage means and not live out that meaning. Exposure to God's word is not enough. Hey, the devil knows the word. He does, says in the word. Satan is well aware of the scripture. So it's not enough to know it. We must practice it and it has to lead to obedience. So transformation, the definition of transformation is a thorough or dramatic change in appearance, conversion. Romans 12, 2 says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. All we have to do is walk outside our doors, turn on the television, and we see the vile, ugly conversation that is going on. And that seems to be continually invading the atmosphere. We who know Jesus and are transformed and know that we have to put into practice, we have to be different. We have to be the ones that, that shine the light into the darkness. If not, we're all going to need uh, healing and we'll all be filled with depression, anxiety, uh, suicide thoughts. I mean, because it's ugly. It is ugly, but Jesus didn't die for us to have ugly. Jesus died so that we would have life and life more abundantly. And it does begin in our mind. In our mind. So we need to do some thinking. <laughs> we need to look. We need to actually look at our mind thoughts. What's coming in? What am I thinking? What are my wants? You know, I started out saying I really want to work out today. This is what I want. Will I follow through? That's going to be up to me. I make the choice. Am I going to be thinking on what is true, what is lovely, what is pure, or am I going to let the tormentor in, just torment my mind all day today with the things that God does not want me to take on? Or am I going to send it back and just say, no, take that thought captive and pull it down. We get to choose. We get to choose a healthy mind is a healthy person, which then extends to a healthy spouse, which then extends or to a healthy home, uh, healthy employees. You know, we need to be healthy. And those that are in Christ are the healthiest because the everything that Jesus paid for was health and love and goodness. So we get to choose. And it starts in our mind. It starts in our mind. We can't have the blessings of God without his relationship. I wrote down, you know, I wonder how strong my relationship would be with my husband if I decided occasionally to have a meal with him. We know the answer. We know the answer. It wouldn't be a very good relationship. You know, sometimes we just have to see it on a very human level. And running a race, working out, requires discipline. It requires discipline. So does the Christian life. So does the walk with Jesus. So does the follower of Jesus. It requires, it requires discipline. It requires prayer time. You know, when I first got saved and Man, when they talked about praying, it, I would get excited about it, but I was like, there is just nothing to say. I'm like done. After 10 minutes, I'm like, ah, I, I, I've done all my prayer time. How, how do these people do it that pray all day long? How do you do that? And, and man, I had no idea, but God and the Holy Spirit did. And, and now... It's my greatest joy to pray for people. It's my greatest joy to spend whatever time. I don't see the clock when God calls me to pray, but I'm just showing you that years ago, I had, I just didn't think it was possible because it didn't make sense here. But as I walked with Jesus, here became here. And when you have head knowledge and it gets transferred to the heart, everything changes. 
So God, I just pray right now in the name of Jesus for our minds. I pray for a transformation. I pray for an understanding of how we have to renew our mind. And we can program and program and program. But if it's not Holy Spirit doing the program, it is going to be short-lived no matter how long that is. Holy Spirit, you're the one that transforms. And we need you. We need you today. We need you right now. And I ask you to invade our minds, invade the ones that are calling out for a different mindset, the ones that need to have their minds washed from all the junk that's been in their minds because they want different, show them what different looks like that is going to be eternal, that is going to be today. Give us the strategy, Holy Spirit as only you can do. I thank you, Father, for the joy of a transformed mind. I thank you, Father. There is nothing more beautiful. There is nothing more victorious when our mind goes from torment to joy to peace to that place of knowing that no matter what, God's got my back and I'm going to be all right. That is a victorious mind that is a healed mind and everybody benefits from that and i pray for this in the mighty name of jesus christ amen have a great day